So what's going on with the all new 2024 Grand Highland? I know some of you may be on the market looking for one. Can't find them anywhere where there is a stop sale for the Grand Highlanders and the Grand Highlander hybrids. Why? Well, a while back, June 20th, 2024, Toyota issued out an interim notice, 24TA09, and it states, the condition is, the curtain shield airbags on both the driver's and passenger side may not deploy as intended during certain crashes when the driver or front passenger windows are rolled down. If this occurs, the vehicles may not meet a federal safety standard, increasing the risk of injury during certain crashes. So how many vehicles are we talking about? How many Grand Highlanders? So for the 24 Grand Highlander, we're, Grand Highlander, we have approximately 76,700 vehicles, according to the letter from Toyota. And for the 24 Grand Highlander hybrids, we have about 35,000 affected vehicles. An approximate stop sale dealer inventory of about 2,800. So what does this mean? So Toyota's not really being too specific as to what's going on. I, I've seen online too a couple of videos on what's going on. So when the curtain shield airbags deploy, I've seen it with the uh, crash test dummies. I guess there's a certain pocket, you know, after all the airbags deployed that your head might find its way in. And of course you will get injured if the curtain shield airbags are not deployed properly. So for the remedy, it states that Toyota is currently preparing the remedy for the issue. So while they're currently preparing the remedy, when one does come out, Toyota dealers will replace the driver and passenger curtain shield airbag free of charge. So although they state that they're working on the remedy, I guess maybe where they're going to get the parts from, how, how it's going to be manufactured, they at least gave us a clue that both the driver's side and then the passenger side curtain shield airbags will be replaced. So what's involved in replacing the passenger or the driver's side curtain shield airbag? Where is it located? Well, the curtain shield airbags are located right above the headliner, like right alongside of the roof. So if you take a look at this example, this is a Sienna we were working on with a water leak. And we already have the headliner removed. This is not a Grand Highlander. This is just a Sienna. But at least it will give you guys a better visual of where the curtain shield airbags are placed and what happens to them. When they deploy, I'll show you that in a little bit. So if you take a look at this Sienna, you can see how the long curtain shield airbags run, uh, runs alongside of the roof. And usually they're held up with a couple 10 millimeter bolts, a few nuts on some models, but generally a couple 10 millimeter bolts and nuts. So in case of a crash, the airbag computer will determine which side to deploy. Now let's talk about how much for Toyota pay us technicians to do this job. Now, knowing Toyota, I already looked at the flat rate manual that Toyota pays to remove the headliner. So for most Grand Highlander, it pays 2.9, which is a problem I'll get to in a minute. And then if you have one of those Grand Highlanders with the panoramic roof, they give you a little bit more time. I guess maybe it goes up to 3.9. They give you an extra hour. I honestly think a job like that should be about seven. Seven hours, about a day's work, about three and a half hours to take your time and do it right, to remove the headliner, to not make sure, uh, to make sure you don't scuff anything up, stain anything. But to give us three hours, at least that's what I'm, um, I'm assuming that it's going to be. Because even without the recall, when I looked at the labor time for a headliner job on the Grand Highlander, the ones without the panoramic roof pays 2.9, and then the ones with the panoramic roof pays 3.9. So what's adding two airbags, but it, it makes it four, even at five. I think a job like that should be seven because now you're talking about, again, brand new cars, 2024 with very little miles. You want to make sure the headliner job comes down clean and then goes back up clean. You don't want fingerprints. You don't want, you know, scuff and crease marks on the headliner. And the only way you're going to get that is to ensure that the text are getting, you know, adequate time. Three and a half hours, four and a half hours, I don't think it's enough. Five hours even on the high end. And I don't think they're going to pay five hours. But even if they did, I think it should be set. Because why? Most likely it's going to be a skilled technician who's going to be dropping these headliners down because you're going to have to be electrical expert. But that's the thing with Toyota. Anytime they have an airbag recall, they always want you to be electrical expert. So that means the guys who's doing the gravy works, the brake job, the tires, they're not going to be able to touch it. There's going to be a few limited guys in the shop 
that have the certifications to do it, but they're not going to be too happy because they're not going to be paid fair. That's another thing with the, the industry too. Sometime when you're really skilled at it, you get the short end of the stick because you're stuck doing these kind of jobs. Meanwhile, the guys who are limited, who may not be able to do those kind of work, who are not electrical experts, who are not engine experts, they're stuck doing all the brakes. Any brake job that comes in, oh yeah, bring it right here. And before you know it, they have 10, 12 hours for the day. Meanwhile, you may walk out with six, seven, but you know, that's the problem with the industry. And I don't think it's got to be fixed anytime soon. So that's what we're going to have to do. Drop the headliner. And like I said, a lot of these cars, Grand Highland just, just came out 2024. So most likely they're going to have very little miles on them, still fairly new. And then we're going to have to remove the headliner. So at least I'm hoping Toyota can at least give six. At least if you can come close to seven, it will be ideal for all of us. That way we can take our time, make sure we do it right, lower the headliner, make sure we don't have any crease. Because that's what it's going to take, man, to get a headliner. I mean, that's the only job you can touch. If you have one of these tan headliners, it's not a job you want to juggle back and forth between this car going to another car. You know, you want to be focused on that car. Because right when you put on your clean gloves, that's all you want to touch. Otherwise, you're going to stain it for sure. Now you have to clean it, and then you have an upset customer. And it's just a domino effect from there. So hopefully Toyota does right and at least compensate the techs, you know, properly. So at least we could get a fair time so we're not so angry as watching the other guys just walk around with brakes in their hands and coolant flushes and, you know, all the easy stuff. At least we could feel a little bit more appreciated and compensated by getting paid adequately. But at the end of the day, it is good that Toyota jumped on top of this because I, for one, know the importance of a curtain shield airbag because you see a while back me and my wife and my daughter we're in uh we were in our 19 highlander we were driving on making our way home and then some 16 17 year old kid ran a red light and it struck the the driver's side rear of our highlander that was our family car 19 highlander and it totaled it and me being the driver the curtain shield airbag deployed as you can see in the image and it caught me right on my um, left eye because I was kind of turning this way. And then as the, you know, kid ran the red light, he caught the rear quarter um, bumper. Good thing he had a path to go through because if he would have T-boned me, I'm not sure if I would have been here today. And good thing he missed a gas tank because otherwise it could have been a fire hazard. But he caught just the rear bumper. Right when I was getting ready to finish passing through the light, he caught the back bumper, and at least that gave him a path to continue going through instead of our car absorbing all of the impact. So if you take a look at the images, that's how it look when the airbags deployed. And if you ever wonder, wonder how it feels to get hit by one of those, I mean, I guess it's better than hitting my head on the window or the, the glass. But if you want to imagine what it felt like, just imagine getting, you know, just a jab from Mike Tyson, you know, a pro boxer, not a, not a haymaker, not a you know, not a power blow, not an uppercut, you know, just, just a jab, you know. Just imagine a jab right in the eye, man. That, that's what the current shield airbag feels like. But then again, you know, it's better than, than hitting my head on the glass, I guess. But, you know, it does feel like you're getting punched by a, a professional boxer. It comes at you quick, but I'm glad that it did its job. My eyes were red for, you know, a few days because it was unexpected. I think that's what added to the damage because I was looking already in that direction. So I think if I was already facing straight, looking at the windshield and it just caught the side of my head, it would have been better off. But no, I saw the car coming, turned my head and then wham, next thing you know, I'm looking at this airbag. And it's crazy, the technology in these cars, man. The passenger side didn't deploy. So as the car hit the rear quarter bumper, the airbag computer I already detected within milliseconds that, hey, the impact happened on the driver's side. I'm only going to deploy the curtain shield airbag. No need to mess around with the passenger side. And it's crazy how fast the computer is able to calculate that. So I don't want to knock it for the job that it did. It did help me from hitting my head on the window. So I know firsthand the importance of the curtain shield airbag functioning properly. So it's a good thing that Toyota step, stepped up and jumped on top of this early. So I'm sure it's because they probably seen a case out there where Somebody may have been injured. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's what happened, but usually when they jump on top of these recalls, they have their reasoning why. Maybe a couple studies were done and they found out there was a defect. 
And like I said, in the condition, Toyota is not really specific as to what's going on with the Grand Highlanders. They're just saying, hey, it may not deploy or, you know, deploy as intended. So they're kind of working on what they can do better, maybe to cover the whole length of the, the side of the car when it deploys to eliminate that extra little free pocket where you might find yourself in. But I'm hoping they'll get back and get the remedy out soon. So those who are looking for a Grand Highlander are able to buy one ASAP. I know me and my wife are looking for one right now. And it's unfortunate. Right when we're about to purchase one, they came out with that recall or that interim notice stating there is a stop sale. And that's the other thing too, man. My daughter was in the car. Good thing. You know, we're all okay. But I'm just glad he hit us where he hit us and he had that path to go through instead of our car absor absorbing everything all the impact. So I can't say I'm mad. I'm just glad that we are still here and the car didn't catch on fire. But it's just a, a, a kid, you know, just driving a car rented on Toro. He had no insurance, of course. So my insurance had to pay for everything. And of course, my rates went up. Like everything was my fault, pretty much. And, you know, he got away scot-free. Well, I'm sure he's going to have to pay a couple fines and lose his license for a while, but you know, if he even had a license, but it seemed like we got the short end of the stick. We got rid of the, uh, the 19 Highlander got total. So right now we have a 23 Highlander, which we love very much, but you know, we're looking to get into a grand Highlander and unfortunately there is a stop sale right now. So we're not able to do that. So hopefully Toyota figures it out soon and then get the remedy out and then start manufacturing new grand Highlanders that doesn't have the recall. And then, you know, customers are able to start purchasing them again because it is a great car. It is spacious. Yeah, it's a front wheel drive, but you don't have the money for a Sequoia and you don't have the money for a 4Runner. The Grand Highlander is pretty much the next best thing out there. You know, it's spacious inside. It's big body. You know, yeah, it's front wheel drive, but, you know, if you're not towing anything with it, you don't have a camper you need to pull around. You're not really doing heavy workload with it. You just need something that can accommodate the family. I think the Grand Highlander is the great choice. Same four-cylinder turbo engine that's in our Highlander now. So been proven to be reliable. We don't have any issues with those yet. And so far, it's been good to us. And our 23 Highlander, we love it. Big improvement from the 1AR and the 2AR that was in the previous generation. The torque on it is impressive. You know, it takes off really quick at a light. It's almost scary. I almost have to put it in eco mode. Because the throttle is so sensitive, it really wants to go, man. So those new four cylinders, they're, they're, they're incredible. But that's all I got for you guys today regarding the 2024 Grand Highlander and the Grand Highlander hybrids. In regards to the recall that's coming out with the current shield airbags. Any other future updates so it'll provide, I'll be sure to notify you guys and give you guys an update. So hopefully it's rather than sooner so that way you guys can go back to purchasing a Grand Highlander if you are in the market for one. I know me and my family were looking for one. Right before we were getting ready to go shop for one, boom, Toyota came out with a stop sale. Now we can't get one. But that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you find this video informative in any way. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching.